Welcome back to the Book Ends YouTube channel. I am James McGowan. I'm Jessica Faust. And we are social. Time. I'm sorry? I was faster that time. You were. Usually there's like a 30 second delay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we are doing all of our YouTubes, YouTubes from home. It's <laughs> 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 off to a great start. Anyway, so what are we talking about first, Jessica? Um, today, the first thing, we're going to talk about selling a crossover book. Because oh, good. I get a lot of queries that um, describe the book as choosing a genre called crossover, which... There's no such thing. There's no such thing. So I guess we should explain first what a crossover book really is for those who might be new and just stepping into this publishing realm. Yeah, so a crossover book is one of those books that appeals to multiple age groups or genre readers. So Does it uh, crossover? It crosses <laughs> over. <laughs> Basically, it's one of those words that defines itself. Um, but like The Hunger Games, it is a YA dystopian novel, but it definitely appealed to the masses. It appealed to adult readers, um, even some middle grade readers and YA readers. It really reached a ton of audiences outside of the general YA audience. So books that do that and have that power are deemed crossover. Right. So, yes. Yeah. So, Hunger Games was sold and pitched as a YA book, and it is a YA book, but the readership became everybody. Yes. Um, you know, I think even Harry Potter could be described as a crossover book. Oh, totally. Book. Yeah, because that was um, started as middle grade, and it went to YA, and it really okay. grew with the readers, and it just turned into this big mass yes. crossover series. Yes, and you'll see it often too in adults. Less, it's less likely for an adult book to cross over into a younger market in the same way those books did. It's more often that um, an author or a book might cross over across genres. So uh, I'll use Nora Roberts as an example. You see a lot of people who would not consider themselves romance readers who also read Nora Roberts. Yes. Um, it, it has a mass appeal beyond just the typical genre reader. Um, so I don't want a book pitched to me as crossover. And well, it makes us... It makes our job harder, right? It's it's a little um, murky and like the lines are blurred because we can't sell and pitch a book as a crossover because it's not an actual genre. Correct. When, you know, you have to remember the big reminder is that publishing is a business and our job is to sell books and we need to know what market we're selling into. Yeah. So when I'm selling a book, I'm either selling to a publisher who um publishes adult or a publisher who publishes YA. Right. There are very few publishers who do both. Now it could be possible that I may take a book that um may be described as women's fiction and all but has a strong romance and send that to both women's fiction and romance editors. Yeah. But I would never describe that book as a crossover because those publishers are going to publish the book as in a way that works for them. So if it sells to an editor who does primarily romance and a publisher who feels that they could market and sell that book better as romance, that's what they're going to do. Right, and there are tons of books that actually do that. Long Bright River was a release recently that it's at its core is very much a mystery, it's a mystery. book. Yeah. But it has those literary leanings that um, made Riverhead pick it up. Yes. Yes, exactly. So that would be a crossover. The problem is it's not a problem. It was not likely sold as a crossover. It was sold as one thing or another crossover appeal or a book that is considered crossover sort of becomes that on its own. Yeah. It's natural. It kind of happens when the book hits the shelves and finds readers. Right. Right. And, and it's possible that a publisher may look at a book and think, you know, I think we could reach a wider audience with this packaging and these descriptions. And, you know, I have books that are mysteries at their core, um, but they might have women's fiction leanings. And the publisher, rather than putting mystery 
on the cover, we'll call it a novel, in the hopes to read a market beyond just the mystery readers. Right. So the readers who also like women's fiction, since this, these books have a women's fiction edge to them. Well, specifically, um, Ellery Adams' Secret Books and Oh, Scott. good example, yeah. Those are mysteries at their core, but they have an appeal to women's fiction readers. And another example is, I have this one with me, Mimi Lee Gets a Clue. Yeah, so um, Berkeley is actually doing a broader selection of cozy mysteries that while they're normally geared towards an older readership, they have younger characters now and they're gearing cozies and sort of bringing in a new generation of readers and appealing to a younger audience as well as that older audience that typically read cozies. Right, and cozy mysteries are a subgenre of mystery with an amateur sleuth, usually with a fun hook. Mimi Lee here is a um, social media manager. Ah. Um, you know, we also have some other fun hooks we have. We have the Diva series, we have the Bookmobile Cat series, um, series set in libraries. Those are cozy hooks where it's the librarian and the owner of the bookmobile and things like that are the sleuths. That's what a cozy mystery is. This book, because Mimi Lee is a younger character, they're hoping to appeal to possibly YA readers, but definitely a younger mystery market. But they right. are still publishing it as a mystery. They're not publishing it and calling it a crossover. They're just packaging it in a way that makes it appeal that way. Exactly. All of the clues are in the packaging of the book that this is a cozy mystery. It's a book that cozy mystery readers will love, but it's doing so in a way that's also going to appeal to people who would not normally pick up those traditionally packaged cozies. Right. And at the end of the day, what Jennifer Chow wrote is a mystery. So, which I guess goes back to my original statement that started this whole thing off. Um, the reason I don't want a book called a crossover is because I want you to write a book that fits the market that you're targeting. You're either targeting adult mystery market or a YA mystery market. The yeah. voices of those are very different. YA books have a very distinct voice that appeals to YA readers. And those readers may cross over into adult, but at the end of the day, that book is still YA. The end of the day, this is still an adult cozy mystery. Yeah. That's the voice she's written in, that's the style she's written. The packaging will appeal, hopefully, to a much broader audience that will make it potentially a crossover book. But we can't promise that, and we can't sell it in bookstores in a section called crossover. Right, so the writer's job is to write a good book in the genre that they're hoping to write a book for. Um, everything else sort of comes after the fact. Yeah, and the problem for me in a query with calling your book a crossover is what it, the red flag for me is that you are trying to make your book everything. And your book cannot be a mystery and a romance and science fiction and YA and adults all at the same time. It has to appeal to a certain market. So it either, it can be a romance with mystery and science fiction elements. And it can cross over to a YA market, but ultimately what it is, is an adult romance. Right, and losing sight of that kind of is going to be evident in your book. Yeah, and it waters it down. You yeah. know, it waters down your, your writing when you're trying to make it everything. It's like, can we bring it back to food? Oh, of course. <laughs> it's it's lunchtime. <laughs> It's like, you know, making a cake. You know, you can have a chocolate chocolate chip cake, but you can't have a chocolate chocolate chip strawberry coconut lemon cake. You really just can't make one cake that's going to appeal to everybody. Right. Don't at me and tell me you can because I know you can't. That's a that's a good analogy too. And now I want cake. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, so keep this in mind when you're writing your book. Um, crossover isn't something that you can instill in the book yourself. It's kind of a team thing and it kind of happens really naturally. Um, so just write the best book you can for the market and the audience that you want to write for and let it all come after the fact. <laughs> what he said. 
and good luck. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, you never know when we're going to be back these days. We're publishing more videos than normal. Um, and you don't want to miss them. So make sure you click the little bell to get notifications. Stay well, stay safe, and we will see you soon.